Hello and welcome to this video in which I explain bifactor models. My name is Christian Geiser. On this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials usually related to multivariate statistical methods including factor analysis, structural equation modeling, latent class analysis and multi-level analysis. If this is something that interests you then please subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional resources, including a link to my free weekly stats newsletter, as well as additional videos and workshops. In this video here, I want to explain what bifactor models are. Bifactor models are frequently applied in the social sciences in the context of constructs that have a hierarchical structure or where we could say where people want to separate general and specific variants. And so I want to show you an example here where we have uh, nine observed variables or measured variables that can be grouped according to clusters that indicate the same construct or factor. So for example, you could imagine a longitudinal design where you have a single construct or a single attribute such as, uh, for example, subjective well-being that is repeatedly assessed on three measurement occasions with the same three indicators. So then you could group the variables according to time points. Y11, Y21 and Y31 would be the indicators measuring subjective well-being at time one and then Y12, Y22 and Y32 may be the same three indicators measured again in the same people at a different time point and then again at a third time point here. And so when we have something like that, then we can apply a bifactor model if we wanted to separate trait components from situation specific components using latent state trait models. So that would be one application of a bifactor structure to longitudinal data when you want to separate time stable variance components from situation specific or occasion specific variance components. What would that look like in that case? So in this case you have a general factor or we say a trait factor in the context of latent state trait analysis on which all observed variables have loading. So say regardless of time point all the variables load onto this factor or this factor influences all the observed variables because that factor represents the person specific component of behavior that remains stable across time. It's a time invariant factor that affects all variables regardless of time point and that's the trait factor in uh, latent state trait models. And then furthermore we also have specific factors that influence only the variables at a given time point. For example, zeta 1 is the specific factor for time 1, zeta 2 is the specific factor for time 2. And so these specific factors account for residual variance at each time point that cannot be explained by the common trait factor. For example, in subjective well-being, we know that there is a trait component where individuals differ regardless, so to say, of time point in terms of their typical level of subjective well-being. There are people who are generally happier and there are people who are generally unhappier. And so this general component of subjective well-being or happiness that is reflected by the trait. But then in addition to that, in, in addition to the general or typical level, of well-being, there's also a situation-specific deviation depending on situational factors. For example, how did you sleep in the previous night? Maybe you had uh, a bad night of sleep and so that draws your subjective well-being for that day or for that time point down relative to your typical level of subjective well-being. And so that would be reflected in these specific factors that reflect time-specific or occasion-specific influences on the measurements where um, the, the measurements deviate from the 
typical level due to situation specific influences or events that took place at this specific time point. In addition to the general factor and the specific factors in a bifactor model, we also have measurement error variables that characterize random measurement error in the observed scores. So a bifactor model consists of a general factor and specific factors as well as measurement error variables and it allows us to partition the observed variance into general variance components, specific variance components and error variance components and that is because the latent variables and error variables in this model are uncorrelated. You can see there are no arrows here between the general factor Xi and the specific factor Zeta here. Also there are no correlations allowed between the Zeta factors and so therefore the variance and also the error variables are not allowed to correlate with the latent variables and so therefore the variance of each observed variable can be decomposed into variance that is um, due to the general factor, variance that is due to the specific factor and error variance. And that's a useful thing for example in the context of latent state trait analysis with longitudinal data then you could determine what percentage or proportion of the observed variance reflects trait effects or person specific effects which percentage or proportion of the variance represents occasion specific effects or effects of the situation on measurement and what proportion is measurement error variance. So you can examine then to which extent for example subjective well-being is a trait-like construct versus a more state-like or situation dependent construct using a bifactor model here in the context of latent state trait analysis. What are other applications of bifactor models? Another application could be, for example, when you use a design with multiple interchangeable raters to assess um, the quality, for example, of uh, businesses or the teaching quality of university professors and you, for example, randomly select customers to rate the service quality of businesses or you, select, you randomly select students to rate their professors in terms of the teaching quality and so in that situation you might be interested in determining the consistency of the ratings across different raters to see whether there's convergent validity across these raters or whether they diverge strongly in their views of a given target and so in that situation you could have multiple indicators for each type of rater let's say you have um, three different raters for each target that you select randomly and they rate um, for example teaching quality on three items each then you could examine using this model to which extent the ratings converge in the assessment of teaching quality so that would be the common trait factor here or the general factor that would um, capture the convergent validity among the ratings whereas the specific factors then would indicate rater specificity or method effects so the degree to which these ratings have a unique aspect and that is not shared with other ratings so then that would also be an application of such a bifactor model. Now oftentimes a bifactor model is used in the context of um, hierarchically structured constructs like for example intelligence when you have different uh, uh, facets of intelligence or different abilities and you want to separate general variance or g-factor variance from specific variance that's another area where people often use such a model. Now in summary we can say that a bifactor model can be described by a measurement equation where each observed variable has uh, two loadings, one loading on a general factor and one loading on a specific factor. So here the gamma loadings are the general factor loadings, the lambda loadings are the specific factor loadings and in addition there can be an intercept or additive constant and there is a measurement error variable that characterizes 
random measurement error. Let me also compare this bifactor model to another approach that is closely related and that is a hierarchical or second order CFA model where the idea, the conceptual idea is very similar in terms of partitioning variants into general versus specific variants. And so in a second order CFA model, we again have this design where the variables can be grouped. And now instead of having a general factor that directly influences the observed variables and a specific factor that directly influences the observed variables. Here we have a set of first order factors and then the first order factors and, and in addition to that we have measurement error variables um, also and then the first order factors are themselves indica indicators of a general factor or higher order factor and then there are residual variables or specific factors attached to each first order factor. Now, the, the model looks very different from a bifactor model. However, the conceptual idea behind it is very much the same, where we want to partition the variance into general variance, general factor variance, and specific factor variance. And you could imagine here again that these variables represent the same construct measured at three different time points. And so therefore then the first order um, factors are the time specific factors that contain both trait variants and occasion specific variants. And with by introducing the second order factor, we can then uh, partition the true score variants of the first order factors into trait variants so time invariant or person specific variance and situation specific variance that is reflected by these um, zeta um, residual factors or specific factors. So the idea is pretty much the same. The second order CFA model is a little bit more restrictive. It applies restrictions um, that the bifactor model does not contain. So the two models are not equivalent, but oftentimes they show a very similar fit when applied to the same set of data. And the idea behind it is pretty much the same. I hope you found this video useful to learn more about bifactor models and how they compare to second order factor models. If you like the video, then please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and to hit the like button. And also don't forget to check out the description for additional resources and I'll see you next time.